Public officials are expected to act for the public good, not their own personal interests. That means they should never unduly benefit from their official position. Being in a situation where they might is called a conflict of interest. A conflict of interest exists when a reasonable person might perceive that a public official's personal interests could be favoured over their public duties. For example, the heritage officer at a council also has a private business providing heritage advice to the property industry. From time to time, the heritage officer's private clients submit development applications to the council that he has to assess. A university is running a tender process for a new building project, but a person involved has a friend who wants to bid for the work. A compliance officer who has to investigate unlawful behaviour by a business run by the captain of his football team. But how do you know if you have a conflict of interest? Here are four things to consider. First, think about your personal interests. These include your financial interests, such as sources of income, investments and debts. Your relationships with family and friends, but also business associates, people in sporting or community groups even your social media contacts. Next, think about your public duties. All of the things in your job description and the tasks that your agency requires you to perform. But also to serve the public interest and act ethically at all times. Now, consider whether there is a connection or overlap between your personal interests and your public duties. Finally, you need to consider whether a reasonable person might perceive that the personal interest could be favoured. There are two common mistakes that people make. The first mistake is to forget that a conflict arises when a personal interest could be favoured over public duties. Even if you don't take any action to favour your personal interest, you still have a conflict of interest. Let's take an earlier example. If a public official is working on a tender at a university and knows that her friend wants to submit a bid, she has a conflict of interest, even if she never does anything to benefit her friend. The second most common mistake people make is not to disclose the conflict of interest. Because we see ourselves as ethical, honourable people, it can be challenging to imagine ourselves ever doing the wrong thing. Putting it another way, you're not allowed to decide that you don't have a conflict of interest just because you rate yourself as an honest person. So, how do you declare a conflict of interest? Your agency should have a process in place. But, in a nutshell, it should be done in writing, be timely, be accurate. Remember, it only requires a few minutes to protect yourself. After all, a public official who takes advantage of a conflict of interest to obtain a benefit for themselves or someone close to them is probably engaging in corrupt conduct. Also, keep in mind that intentionally concealing or understating a conflict of interest is dishonest and is likely to constitute corrupt conduct. Once you disclose the conflict of interest, your agency then comes up with a plan to manage it Whatever is decided, you're expected to cooperate to make sure the public interest is put first. So, the key things to remember are 1. Conflicts of interest occur when a reasonable person might perceive that your personal interests could be favoured over your public duties. 2. If you conceal, understate or take advantage of a conflict of interest, you might be engaging in corrupt conduct. 3. Disclose your conflict of interest and comply with the plan put in place to manage it. For more information, visit icac.nsw.gov.au.